Hi, my name is Brian Jepson. I'm an editor for O'Reilly, and I, I'm in charge of uh, Make Magazine's series of books. I've also written a few books myself, including Mac OS X for Unix geeks. I'm the co-author of that one. And I love hacking gadgets, everything from handheld devices to cell phones and anything else that I can get my hands on, which is why I'm really excited about today's talk. The iPhone is this amazing device, and it, what's really great about it is it's not just a smartphone where you've got a lightweight operating system and you know, some cool features, but it's actually really a true computer. Uh, it runs a slightly scaled down version of Mac OS X, and unfortunately, Apple's put a number of restrictions on it that lock away its power. So like many hackers, Jonathan Jarsky formed a special affection for the iPhone from the day it was released, and he's played a key role in opening up the iPhone's environment to third-party software development. He's hailed on many geek news sites for opening up the device, and he even uh, led the effort to write some of the first open source applications for it. Jonathan was also the first to develop an application that takes full advantage of the major iPhone APIs, and this is um, something that's really near and dear to my heart as a retro gaming geek. It's a portable Nintendo Entertainment System emulator called NES.app. Jonathan often points out that the hacker community has done something remarkable with the iPhone in that it's produced a complete SDK, a base of developers, and even has a really strong distribution chain long before Apple was talking about it. And this isn't one of those cases where you've got an open source community that's duplicating some pre-existing commercial efforts. This is really unique in that Apple's the one who's been lagging behind, and now they're trying to play catch up with the open source community's efforts. And the iPhone, right now, it's at, at a real pivotal moment. It's the same point that Windows Mobile and Palm OS were at when developers first began embracing those platforms. And as anybody who's used a mobile device uh, and you know, become a real big fan of it, you know that it's a, it really only as good as the developer community is um, in terms of their contribution and, and what they have to offer. And so Windows Mobile and Palm OS hit it big because developers could not only write great apps, but they also could easily distribute them using sites like Pocket Gear and Handango. The iPhone now has two massive distribution chains. There's the community installer application, and this is something that gets put on your iPhone by default as soon as you jailbreak it, and reports have it running on over 2 million iPhones. But you've also got the iTunes store, where Apple's official application is going to be sold through. So the iPhone needs more developers, whether they're enterprise, commercial, or just open source enthusiasts who want to add really cool software to the device. And you can learn all about making software for the device in Jonathan's new book, iPhone Open Application Development. Although it focuses on the open SDK, a number of readers have already reported that it's real easy for them to adapt it for the official Apple SDK. In today's webcast, Jonathan will cover the first steps you'll take in becoming an iPhone application developer, getting the open source tool chain up and running and building an app with it. So without further ado, I turn the presentation over to Jonathan. Uh, just give us a moment while we flip the screens and make the transition. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Uh, let's see. I've gone and accepted the screen. Uh, can you see my screen over there? We can see it perfectly. So you can okay, minimize the web conferencing window. Yep, yep. Uh, so let me pop these down here. All right, well, uh, thanks, thanks everyone, for, uh, for joining us. And uh, there, there's, uh, as Brian was saying, there's a, there's a real exciting community uh, having built up around uh, the iPhone, uh, in particular the, uh, the open source community, uh, over the past seven or eight months that the iPhone's been out. And uh, just to give you a, a very brief history of, of where the community's been with the iPhone, uh, within, within the first two or three weeks of, of the iPhone's release, uh, we had probably about a dozen uh, individuals who, uh, like Brian said, just found the device amazing, and uh, you know, uh, with with this knowledge, this uh, uh, knowledge, uh, this quest for knowledge that seems to be instilled in us to uh, to explore uh, new things, um, this device uh, was found to be uh, one of the the most popular <coughs> and amazing devices um, that a lot of people have seen in, in quite a while. 
And so naturally, um, you had a, a group of hackers who really wanted to dig in and find out what made this device tick. Uh, and so within the first couple of weeks, we had a few dozen people um, issue the first jailbreak uh, for the device. And I'm going to use that word a lot uh, over this session, so I want to make sure everyone understands what jailbreaking is. Um, there, are, there are two two ways to modify your iPhone. One, as you're probably very well aware of, is unlocking, which allows it to run on a third-party network. And unlocking uh, is a, a very low-level <coughs> uh, modification to the phone. There have been a couple of bad unlocks that have been released in the past that have ended up uh, at least temporarily bricking people's phones. So it's somewhat dangerous. Um, but uh, the, the unlocking process is, is what you want to do to run your iPhone on some other network that's not approved by AT&T. Uh, what we're dealing here with today, for the most part, in, in the realms of uh, software development is jailbreaking. And jailbreaking is entirely different from unlocking in that jailbreaking is basically uh, modifying the iPhone so that you have access to the low-level operating system. And what that allows you to do is install your own software. Uh, it allows you to build <coughs> third-party software uh, without uh, necessarily using any official tools uh, from Apple. Uh, it also allows you to install one of the many uh, pre-built uh, software uh, environments that have been created uh, in the open source community for the iPhone. Uh, one of them is the Unix world that we've built uh, for, sorry, uh, one of them is the Unix world that we've built uh, for Leopard here. I'm trying to close this text window. It just keeps popping back up here. You see that? <laughs> Anyway, um, <clears throat> the, um, the, the, other, uh, the other environment, so to speak, is more the other environment. Uh, the Unix environment is great for your typical hacker and uh, your Unix uh, um, admin type people. Uh, what, what most, um, there's that window again. What most people are going to be running as end users on their device, however, is a third party community installer. And it's on its way to being open source. As of right now, the code is just terribly ugly, and I've been told by the author that he wants to clean it up before he releases the code. Um, but what this is, uh, is the community distribution uh, chain, basically, the community distribution uh, uh, source for listing <coughs> open source applications or shareware or you know, basically whatever application is out there today, you'll find listed uh, in one of the repositories that this community installer uh, hosts uh, inside of it. So the jailbreaking process um, in general is commonly referred to as the process by which uh, an end user can run a very simple piece of software and it will put this little installer icon on the, on the iPhone. And then from there, <coughs> you'll be able to uh, basically, install anything uh, that you want to that's listed with one of these repositories. Uh, so just to give you a very brief overview of the end user uh, environment, um, because that's kind of the first step we got to get past before we can even get to development, is how do, you, how do you actually get in your device? How are the end users that you're writing software for, today at least, uh, getting into their iPhone and putting software on it? And um, as, as Brian had noted, been estimated that anywhere uh, near 2 million people uh, have already gone through the jailbreak process and installed this community installer on their device. A lot of those people did it to unlock, uh, whereas uh, a lot of those people are, are also running third-party software. Uh, within, within the first couple of weeks of releasing uh, the jailbreakme.com website, we had uh, 1 million people, and that was last fall, uh, within just a few weeks go to this website, and this website allowed people to uh, jailbreak their own iPhone directly from a web page, uh, and it also happened to fix some security vulnerabilities that we had to come across. Uh, and so there's, there's a huge open source community uh, around this iPhone, and this is how your end users, um, if you're writing software, are going to see their iPhone <coughs> to jailbreak it. The, one of the, the more popular recent programs that's out there today is called iLiberty, and it's available for both Windows uh, and for Mac.